Level 7, we now move on to explore a topic that sits at the heart of the human environment interaction, driving the way that we manage the many competing demands of a complex world. The stress response is one of the most basic survival mechanisms that we have, involving the release of neurochemicals and hormones that energize the body and prepare it to respond to an emergency. Stress overall is an adaptive motivating process. It enables quick responses to dangers and challenges in our environment. However, it is commonly associated with the high arousal emotions of fear and anxiety, as well as frustration when our goals are hampered. Although in its more positive context, Stress can also motivate us to succeed and is associated commonly with feelings of excitement and anticipation. Indeed, we are indebted to the stress response for our heightened performance and focus in many activities. But we also suffer from the effects of persistent negative stress. Obviously, most of us no longer face the sort of conditions in which stress evolved as an adaptive response mechanism. In an ever more complex, crowded and time poor world, the same old responses can be triggered again and again, leading to a state of constant chronic stress. Of course, this stress may be low level compared to facing a life or death emergency, but it is stress nonetheless and the experience of ongoing stress in our day-to-day -day lives is linked with many pervasive physical and mental health problems. In fact, when thinking about the topic of stress in general, most of us are likely to focus on the detrimental effects, so the, the idea of feeling stressed out. Indeed, the many demands that we face on a daily basis do have the capacity to slowly contribute to feeling overwhelmed by it all. And so this sort of stress is of considerable interest to us in terms of how to manage or minimize such stress. However, we cannot overlook the many positive and adaptive elements of the stress process as well. Positive types of stress can be referred to as eustress. This occurs when we rise to a challenge and it's associated with things like performing in front of an audience or competing in sports. It can also be seen in the enjoyable fear that occurs when we know we're actually pretty safe, like if we're watching a horror movie or riding a roller coaster. Of course, this all depends on us actually finding such activities entertaining in the first place. On the other hand, the term distress refers to negative forms of stress, where we feel overwhelmed by our situation, or that we can no longer cope with the challenges presented to us. Whether positive or negative, the experience of stress arises from the presence of a stressor. And this can be some actual thing in the physical environment, or entirely perceived, like a worry about some future event or the consequences of our current actions. Whether physical or imagined, the stressor by itself is not sufficient to account for the experience of stress. The actual experience of stress depends entirely on our cognitive interpretation of the situation, how we understand it and how we relate to it as well as our perceived capacity to cope with the situation. And all of this is also influenced by the emotions that we feel going into or because of the situation. So we recognize the role that cognition has in the experience of stress, and then we can move on to identify a range of environmental factors that counters stressors to some extent for us all. So of course, major life-threatening or extremely disruptive situations like disasters and personal tragedies 
are of course going to be stressful for almost everyone. But on a more common level, there are other things that we encounter every day, which constitute the many background stressors of daily life. These include things like atmospheric forces, such as temperature, weather and pollution. Noise that we might occur in our study or work areas. Crowding, such that we experience almost every day going to work or navigating the streets. And of course, the ever-present time pressures. Many of these sorts of background stressors are inherent in modern life, especially for urban and city dwellers. In fact, there are growing concerns about the potential long-term negative impacts of city living. And there's of course a subsequent interest in how to better design urban environments to minimize such stressors. The problem is that we humans are very adaptable. We often don't consciously register at all the build-up of stressors all around us. And so even, uh, even though they are present, we may think that we're unaffected by them or we simply may not recognize their presence. So even if we think that we're not stressed out, our bodies can still be generating an ongoing stress response. And so our bodies then can pay the price of such low level chronic stress, even if our minds think otherwise. On a related problematic note, many of us are in fact aware of the presence of low level stress facing us every day, but we rarely pause to think about the causes of such stress, or how we might change our behavior or try to modify our world to minimize these stresses. In this module, we'll be examining the stress response and the concept of stressors, both in terms of their objective reality and our cognitive appraisal of them. We'll then be focusing on environmental stressors, which are the causes of stress within the physical environment. Some of these are entirely physical, such as weather patterns and climate, while others, such as territoriality and crowding, are related both to the physical and social context that we find ourselves in. And so the first question we'll be looking at in this module is the fundamental one of what is stress. And then following on from this, we'll be considering what are stressors. Finally, we'll be considering the more practical and physically oriented topic of what are the environmental stressors and how do they affect us. So as you go through this module, think about how you experience stress in your day to day life. Are you aware of the environmental triggers? and how they impact you? How does your thinking about them influence your stress response? And finally, also consider how you might harness the experience of stress to work for you, to motivate higher levels of performance and engagement.